All right, in this second video, I'm gonna do another Selenium, Selenium example uh, where we have a button like this to show more rows. And, uh, and so you can see here I have a table um, with a bunch of uh, kind of rows about hurricanes and I can show more to get 20, show more. And if I keep clicking this, eventually I get to the end and, uh, and there's no more to load. Okay, so I'm gonna head over here and I'm starting much like I started last time um, where, uh, where I'm kind of creating my options. I'm not going to do it in headless mode on my virtual machine. Instead, I'm going to do it uh, with a, an actual browser on my local host just because it's easier to see what's going on. And so I'll run this. And I get this nice pop-up to the side. And so I'll just try to shrink this down so you can see both, um, uh, both screens is the idea. And... Um, and then what I want to do is I want to load this page. I'm going to copy this uh, URL. I'm going to paste this here. I'm going to say browser.get. And I'm going to put that there. Maybe let me just try to um, put this in a separate variable so we can see what's going on. There's my URL. I get it. And so that's good. And, um, and then what I want to do is I want to try to figure out, um, you know, how can I see uh, how can I see what this um, button is? And so if I come back here, actually, you know, one, one thing that I've noticed is that if I click around or do too much manually um, inside of the Selenium browser, it can mess up my code, right? So I'm going to kind of leave that one alone. But over on this version, right, which is just in my regular browser, um, one of the things I can do is I can right click on various pages, uh, places on the page in Chrome, and I can say inspect. And, uh, and it shows me the HTML for that, right? I can try to see different parts of that. And so if I right click on the show more button, I can see that, um, uh, that here it has an ID, right? The ID is more. Can you, can you see that? Let me make it a little bit larger. Let me, can I shrink this down as well? There we go. So you can see the ID for that button is more. And, and so when I'm over here, if I wanna get that button, I can do something like this. I can say like browser .get element by ID, and then I saw the name of that was more. And um, uh, and do I have a typo here? Let me just try to check my notes here. I think, uh, or actually, I'll just try to come back here to my previous notebook. Find element by ID. Excuse me. Okay, not yet. Find find element by ID and I do that. And I'm just gonna kind of grab that button here. And uh, and then what I can do is actually clicking that is very simple, right? Instead of kind of manually, instead of manually clicking over here, I have that element, I can just say button dot click like that. And uh, and then that works. And, uh, and I can keep doing that. We keep running it until I'm at the end. And, uh, and now I see that, well, I actually have a problem, right? The button doesn't exist anymore. And indeed, if I ran this line of code again, um, I would see, well, I don't actually have, have that thing. So, so I think what I'm gonna do is uh, up here, I'm gonna have a while loop like before. And I'm gonna say, you know, keep clicking uh, as long as there is something to click, right? So I'm gonna do that. And, um, and so I'm going to try to find this thing. I'm going to do it like this. And, uh, and I should do that inside of a try except, right? Because maybe, uh, maybe it's not there, right? So I am going to um, kind of check for that same exception that we've had before. I'm going to say except. And this is the exception that we get, the no such element exception. If I see that thing, then I want to break, right? I mean, there's no more button. Uh, but as long as I have that, well, then I can click it, right? So I'm going to say button dot click like so. And so let, let me kind of delete this other garbage here. Uh, now it's a little simpler. I'm going to do this and, and you see it's very fast, right? I mean, kind of it loads the page and it's instantly there, uh, which is good. I guess normally fast is good, uh, but maybe I'm going to do is just say import time and, uh, and then kind of each time I click it, uh, I'll just wait like one second just so that you can see it actually happening. So I'll say like sleep, you know, I'll, I'll sleep one and a half seconds. So I'll do that. So it's there. I'm not touching anything, but it's trying to keep on. Um, oh, huh. I actually have to import it. Let me, let me do that now. It's going to, 
Oh, and I have a new window now. I'm just going to keep loading these things bit by bit until it's done, which is good. I can close this one too. And then at the very end, then I should be able to say something like b.page source. Maybe I'll put that in, in, in kind of a document, something like that. So I'm going to do this. Oops, excuse me. Let's say it one more time. I'm going to go a little bit faster. So I'll say like, go twice as fast. I run that. Oh, and there's no window. Let me let me run this from the top. So I get my window. And I'm going to resize that over here on the right hand side. My apologies. And then I'm going to run this thing. And I can just see it clicking, clicking, clicking until it's done. And then down here I actually have my HTML. And uh, and you can see well it has like a whole bunch of TRs, right? It has all the data there. Um, one last thing that I forgot to talk about last time is that when I'm all done, I can say b.close, and that will automatically close the browser for me. And that's just kind of good practice. I don't have a bunch of browsers running in the background. Uh, eventually, that'll eat up all the memory on my system. And then I won't do it here, but uh, you know, I could say to do, you know, parse doc with, you know, with this being my doc, I could parse that with, uh, you know, beautiful soup and pull out a table just like I did last time, but, but I'll, I'll just skip that for now. So I'm gonna stop recording.